What's going on everybody and welcome to Halite part 5. Uh, in this part what we're going to be doing is building on the last tutorial where we at least got a, we, we built the AI to, or at least we built a script to pull features and just play the game randomly between choosing three choices, mine a planet, or mine our own planet, attack or mine empty planets not in that order so so what we need to do now is we need to have a way to, to make these these uh, two players play against each other uh, and then we're gonna save the winning players plays and they're basically their features to their output that's what we want to save so we've got the code all done uh, but now what we want to do is actually create a script that will just automatically run them the other thing we want to do is I'm just going to go over here. The script that we're working on right now is data creator. Um, I'm going to call my bot and I'm actually just going to do my bot dash one. And I'm going to copy paste. And this will be my bot dash two. I'm going to edit that and I'm going to change version to two. Save, exit, done. So now to run these, like if we wanted to compete against ourselves real quick, I went ahead and just saved it. But it would be highlight.exe. Uh, and then my bot one versus my bot two. Go ahead and uh, run that real quick and make sure. Dang, I closed it. <laughs> For whatever reason, if you copy something in idle and then you close idle, the copy does not remain. Anyway, okay, so these two AIs competed against each other. Uh, <laughs> this, this dummy only produced four ships, did 510 damage. This one. Uh, produced 36 ships and did quite a bit more damage uh, and we can watch a replay of that real quick oh interesting <laughs> they, they crashed into themselves immediately both both AIs did that and then it looks like he's probably just going to come destroy him real quick pretty good okay so um, so yeah like watching this guy play even you're like oh yeah, that that wasn't bad. <laughs> so, so not a bad not a bad set of moves there. So, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, I guess I'll leave this up because actually right now um, I'm running Charles on uh, on the latest version of this this deep learning AI. So uh, I'm gonna exit that out. And yeah, so as you can see here too, the other thing to pay attention to is basically we've got the input vectors and the output vectors already saved, so we can just pull up one of them. So here's an example of an input vector, quite a bit of data to be showing there. But anyway, there's your input vector, uh, basically all this data. And then that maps to the output vectors, which much simpler, all that data. Okay, so move this. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how to make this call, you know, that, that to run. So we're going to import OS and then OS.system is what we can do to make a system call. And then we just want to run that command, which I actually kind of say, I saved it over here. Just like all the other tutorials, uh, if you just, if you want the sample code and exactly what I'm doing, you can go to the tutorial. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, you don't have to type all this out. So we just call the system to go ahead and run. Uh, all this. Now, the next thing we want to do is we we, can't, we need to know who won the game. <laughs> and the problem is, um, from what I could tell, there's really no easy way to determine that, at least with highlight.exe. Um, so what we're going to do is actually we're going to take this, uh, which is missing the closing. Weird. How did that run in the first place? We're missing the closing that. Anyway, we want to run that and out this data to uh, we're just going to call this data.game out. Okay, so we send the data out to that file. So that's just going to send whatever runs here to just a quick file. Basically, it's just going to append the output to that file. So we run that, uh, and then we can parse that file. So for example, we could just say with open uh, and then data.game out. And we're just going to open that with the intention to uh, read as f we're going to say contents equals f dot read lines and then the way it works is i mean first we could just run this real quick just so you can see it um, but it should have kind of the same order every time just waiting for this game to be over uh, 
data.gameout. Here we go. So here's an example of the game out file. So it's exactly what you see in your console. But as you can see here, these are the lines that we're after. So basically, uh, so read lines is going to read by new lines. So this would be the last line. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So player one is going to be whatever contents negative four is. That's going to be the information on player one, or they're calling it number zero. The second player, or player number one, is going to be negative one, negative two, negative three. And then from here, we can parse. What rank did they get? Um, you could say how many frames they got through, how many shifts did they produce, and how much damage did they deal. We can grab all that data, so we can just parse it. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, we're going to say uh, Charles Charles bot one is equal to contents contents negative four. And then Charles bot two would be contents negative three. And then we can just go ahead and print both of those out. So just copy that, paste, copy, paste, and then we'll run it. I'll drag this over. Right. So we can see, OK, we got those two things. Now, sometimes if somebody times out, this won't be the case. And then we'll end up hitting an error which is okay, we'll, we'll, we'll make it. Um, but yeah, the only time these won't be in that order is if one of the bots times out or hits an error. Okay, so now what we wanna do is be able to parse data from these lines. You could use regular expression or we could just split it. I'm gonna do splits and I'm not gonna make you guys sit through me writing this out. Like I said before, uh, I think it's just a waste of time. So I'm gonna paste get ships, get damage, get rank. So we split by rank number, go to the right hand side, split by space and, go to the left hand side, boom, got it. <laughs> if someone wants to write a regular expression to do that, have at it. Uh, this is just easier for my little brain to understand. So uh, anyway, continuing along, uh, what we wanna do now is grab that data um, and then we can output that data. Again, um, I don't see any value in making everybody write this one out. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one as well. And all this does is grabs how many ships, how much damage, how much rank uh, for player one, player two. Uh, one thing I'm going to point out here is you might think about, uh, in this case, this is a 1v1. Uh, you might think about doing training both 1v1 and 1v1 v1 v1 uh, because both of those matter <laughs> so so uh, make sure make sure you uh, consider doing that if you only train this ai to do 1v1 matches um, um, spoiler alert it will become very aggressive uh, and it will eliminate your your 1v1 opponents in just a lightning fashion but uh, so basically, it'll pretty much win every game that the, your opponent doesn't flee. But you're going to lose basically every four-player match because you're going to get too aggressive initially not get enough planets. You'll probably take out one of the players, so you won't get last. You'll probably get third. You definitely won't get first. <laughs> so anyway, something to think about. But we're just trying to make a simple example here. So... Uh, once we have all this information, we're ready to figure out who won and then save the data. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste this code because it doesn't make much sense to have everybody write it out. If it was CharlesBot1 that has rank of 1, uh, so if that is who won the game, um, then we want to take that input vector and save it, or basically append it, to train.in. And then we want to take the output vector from player 1, and save that to train.out. We're just going to keep appending it to train.out. If it was player two that won, uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take player two's input vectors, save them to train in, output vectors, same, save them to train out. Now, uh, there's going to be plenty of times where, like, maybe someone times out immediately or uh, the game just went too quick. Maybe one of the players didn't actually do anything, so we didn't put up a fighter or anything. Uh, or whatever. 
Uh, there's gonna be lots of times where something like that happens. So what I'd like to do is create a ship requirement and a damage requirement. Again, just like a lot of these things, you can feel free to change these, make them whatever you want. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Um, you can, I'll show you the results of exactly what I did. It's nothing stellar. So the whole point of this is that you guys can kind of tweak it um, and, and see where it gets you. So anyway, ship requirements, uh, we're gonna say we want at least 10 ships for the victor and damage requirement will be at least 1000. If we don't meet those requirements, we don't save the data. So, uh, so the way that I'm going to handle for that is basically, uh, we'll come down here. Um, actually, I think I'm just going to copy and paste the full code because <laughs> there's, there's quite a few changes here that need to be made actually. So, uh, this is with the full code now, pretty much the same thing here. I just added this to track percentage wins, uh, especially when we get to the point what like once you've trained your eight. I have no idea what that was. Once you've trained your AI, um, you're probably going to want to now compete either AI versus AI or AI versus random script and save the winners. Uh, and then maybe AI versus AI, save the winners uh, and keep doing that and iteratively improve. So I like to track who is winning at the time because what we should expect is after we've trained this, um, we should expect to see that the AI is better. So when we run this one, when we run player one versus player two, given enough matches, let's say we play about a thousand matches or 5,000 matches, we should see that player one and player two are about 50-50. There should be no reason why one is significantly better than the other. But the hope is after we train an AI, that the AI has a better percentage win. So the AI should be better than player two or whatever, let's say player, if, if the AI was player one, it should do better than 50-50. Um, oh, the other thing though is I changed this. So this was from my code. So right now it's actually dash one and dash two in our code. So here it just computes the percentages, scrolling on down, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, here, before we write to those files, we just wanna make sure that we have more ships than are required We've done more damage than is required. Um, also, we want to sleep for two seconds of every iteration. <laughs> I have no idea why we need to do that, but for whatever reason, at least for me, if I didn't do those two second sleeps, it would like copy the data. So like every time it would run, it would it would do like five of the game outs. It would save like five entire train in train out. It would just five times. So I don't know why it was doing that. But if I put in the sleep, that didn't happen anymore. So awesome. <laughs> so that's what I went with. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that and let's test it, make sure it runs, make sure it's doing exactly what we were hoping for. So I'm gonna pull up the command prompt. We're gonna do python data-creator.py. Uh, let me just go ahead and run that, see if we hit any errors. Uh, one thing to make sure is make sure people are producing ships and doing damage. Uh, if you run this and you're not seeing that happen, something's probably wrong. But right now it looks like they're running. We're seeing everything that we expect. Currently it's 33 to 66, but we've only run a few games. Now it's 50-50. All right, and we're playing games. Unfortunately, there's no way to silence uh, the creation of these replay files. Um, you can just manually delete them. Or what I did was... Uh, I just wrote a quick script that would find all the log files and .hlt files and just delete them. And I just called it cleanup.py and I just double click it and it just clear all the, all the files. <laughs> because uh, you'd like to run this at least a thousand times, but probably like, I don't know, 5,000 times or something like that to get a good amount of training data. So uh, you'll, you'll wind up with a lot of replay files. Okay, once you've done um, I would suggest you do at least a hundred games, hopefully at least a thousand and ideally, I don't know, a few thousand. Uh, but once you've got a good amount of training data, uh, like I say, at least a hundred before you do the next tutorial, I think, uh, once you've got a good amount of training data, uh, we can move on. And then basically this, so this train, where are you? Here you are. Train file. Is that even on? This? No, that is not on the screen. Uh, so train it. Mm, you're killing me. Let's do this. Okay, train in, train out. It's popping all around. But anyway, 
still on screen. So train in, train out. As you can see, they're growing over time. We can just open them real quick. Um, so, so far for sample training data, we've already got 15,000 uh, examples. Depending on how quick your computer is, uh, these matches can go fast or slow. Also, if you were to like, I don't know, multi-process this or something like that with some sort of lock on the train in, train out. The last thing you want to happen is these files get corrupted. They need to always be in perfect order, right? So number 15,440 uh, input vector needs to exactly match 15,440 output vector. If that doesn't happen, uh, you're going to be in a world of hurt. <laughs> so make sure that that uh, is always the case. Anyway, run this for a while, and then whenever you've got a good amount of train data, I'll see you in the next tutorial where we actually build a Keras model to train against the train in and out, train a model to hopefully pick a decent output vector. So I will see you there. Questions, comments, leave them below. Till next time.